Okay, I got the uh, Raspberry Pi B revision 2. It's a newer one, one with the mounting holes. And I got it mounted to my uh, board here. It's just a piece of wood. And I got my um, uh, experimenter's board here, or you could call it Solidus breadboard. Two of them with some LEDs connected and it's connected to the uh, GPIO of uh, Raspberry Pi. I made my own Raspberry Pi uh, GPIO cable out of uh, an old cable from a floppy disk drive. And it might be a so it's, it's a little odd, but anyway, it's um, cut it here, and I took off the head of that. Okay, and then the rest of the cables. You can see, I, what I did was I, I uh, stripped each one of them and I tin each each one, each wire, and uh, tinned it with the uh, solder. So that it's solid instead of uh, stranded, because each one of them is stranded, and uh, so I tin them all so that it's solid, and I connected it to this little smaller uh, board here with a uh, one kilo ohm resistors, two of them. There's a one, one ground and the other resistor for the uh, positive 3.3 volts that's supplied by the. Uh, Raspberry Pi, and all I did was cross it over to the seven segment LED display. It's a yellow seven segment LED display, and it's common anode, so that's important. So the anode goes right to the resistor up to the 3.3 volts, and the rest of them are actually a GPIO connected here. The negative, the ground is not actually being used, so it's directly going from the GPIO set to output to the LED segment, seven segment LED display here, and then all of them converge into a one common anode to one resistor. It should be seven resistors to each each one of these guys, so it should be. Uh, GPIO, then to a resistor, then to the seven segments. But I use one because I didn't want to do all that work. Um, now to compensate for that, I wrote a piece of software to switch it to to instead of having all eight, seven segments on at once, it switches. So if you want to display a, a, a one where you would have uh, these two lit. Instead of lighting up both at the same time, we just alternate. We just be flashing alternately at high speed so that you don't see the uh, switching through positions persistence of uh, vision. Okay, so. Uh, and and it is uh, again. It's common anode. Is the uh, LED? What it what it is is um, the GPIOs. When you set it to on, it's uh, it sends out a positive signal. So you connect to an LED to the ground, and it lights up the LED. Whereas uh, common uh, anode, where whereas if you um, switch it to uh, off. It's actually giving a, a negative, a slightly negative signal so that you connect one end to an LED and then the other end of the LED to the positive and lights up the LED so it's reverse when you connect it to uh, the other end to the um, positive. So you can actually have one GPIO coming out with two LEDs. So what that would look like is, let's see, so like right now I have the Raspberry Pi and let's say one GPIO, right? 
let's say one and um, to a resistor to one LED let's say to the ground and splice that and you have one more LED going up positive okay that could go back to the uh, GPIO 3.3 uh, volts there's two of them that have that supply 3.3 volts and then this is ground there's two of them you can use for ground you can look it up in uh, eLinux uh, which supplies you all the info so I'm not going to repeat that uh, it's ground uh, so when you switch this GPIO on it'll light up this guy you switch it off I'll give it a zero this one lights up so this is the reverse of this so normally you expect this guy is you put a one signal and this is on so this is the opposite okay so one this one's on this one's off zero this one's off this one's on okay so let's test this a little okay let's switch off the lights There's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So again it um it switches. Okay. So in order in order to get the uh, digits and to it also saves energy. So you want to save energy and uh, and also components so you only need one LED and use software to switch it now what I did was I used a, a, a script instead of a compiled program so it's a little slow so you can see the switching okay you see the switching going on because it's slow because of the uh, scripting I use if I use the compiled program, it'll be faster, so that it'll, it'll switch it so fast that you won't be able to tell that it's switching. So, like a digital clock, for example, is switched. Okay, a digital clock, it, it, not all the uh, digits are on. In a digital clock, in a digital clock, only one segment, one LED, is lit at any given moment. So you got like, uh, let's say four or five digits, but at any moment, only one is on. It just switches really fast. That's all. Okay. And so if you had like uh, several of these and you have a Compiled program, let's say uh, C plus plus or something. And you compile it so that it switches on and off very really fast. Then you can make your own clock. Okay. Um, so that's my own interface. Um, you can also use one of these guys, these strips, and build your own. Uh, using a circuit board. Okay, these. Oh, I pushed a little. I actually pushed it to me. But when before it was pushed, it was like uh, so, like this. Before it got pushed, it was like this. Okay, and uh, what you can do is you can get one of these circuit boards. But not this one, though. This one. Uh, wouldn't really wouldn't work out pretty well. You want you want a connector that's uh, 
that has rows of these and then right next to it rows these so so if you so this one here if you could eliminate this and this and just push these closer and that's what you want so let me see if I can illustrate that for you what you want is your connector your the head let's say so you got uh, one plugged into here and then the other head instead of chopping it up you can have that connected to something like this I could just the page. a circuit board like uh, That word's close together. And another one. And another one, and another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. So you have 13 here and 13 there. And you you solder a connector here. So you would plug in your ribbon cable. The head goes here, and then these guys at the end. You would you, on, on the other side. So if you flip this over, you solder one of these pins. You put this guy in there, solder the pins in there. Okay, so actually. Yeah, uh, it's like this. Um, so I got here. So let's say I got 13 and 13. So let's say I got all 26 of them. So you put the connector here. And then you flip it over. And you connect the uh, pins. I think I just threw it out. Here it is. You would plug the pin here. So on one side, you would have the uh, connector here for the ribbon cable. And on the other side, what you would do is this. See, on one side, it would be here. The other side would be here. Okay, so you would solder connections here. And the reason for that is you want to be able to plug it in here, in one of these uh, circuit boards, one of these solid set circuit boards. The problem is, problem is this. When you have one of these guys, okay, let's say you plug it directly into the these uh, posts here, these pins here. Well, they're, they're going to be right next to each other, so you're not going to be able to use them. So it would plug into just this row, and then the other row, it would go into this pit here. And you can't use these guys, you can't just plug them here, because then it would short each other out. These, these pins would short each other, one right next to the other. So it just wouldn't work. Okay, so you would you plug this guy into here. And then you flip it over and you would plug the adapter here into these pins here. So you got 13 here and the 13 there. It just makes it wider so that it goes into these pins so that it'll work like, like what I'm doing here with all these wires. Okay. So I got, so I got pin one over here, pin two, pin three, pin four, pin five. 
pin 25, pin 26. So that's the reason for uh, getting an adapter like that. So, very good idea to uh, make sure to look it up. So, just do DIO. So actually, right there, these guys. This uh, it'll be it'll be this guy actually. It's this one right here. Okay. So this little adapter is what you want to get. Okay. And it, well, this one from Amazon. Uh, it's pretty good. This one from um, eBay. eBay. And, um, let's see. This guy here. Sounds pretty good. This one just does it for you. So if you're lazy, you can just get one of these. You probably want to get this one. Because it's only a, a little bit more. Six fifty, ten dollars $10. So you probably want to get uh, this guy here. Which has everything you need. So one end going to the Raspberry Pi, the other end goes to this adapter, and then the bottom of that you plug into the uh, circuit board. Okay, so it works. And here's a very big picture here, showing you how it actually works. Okay, so that's that's the end product instead of. Uh, this mess here, which I just did because I don't have any uh, adapters, and it'll probably take a month to get here. So that's what I did in the meantime. Okay, thanks. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.